now let's try to understand the impact of netting on the exposure we know for different kinds of financial instruments different kinds of exposure calculation mechanisms are there so now i want to see in uh, quite a good number of uh, otc derivative contracts and with different kinds of counterparties we see netting is a very common phenomena so i am trying to see what is the impact of netting how will netting play a role in terms of uh, decreasing the exposure in what cases netting can decrease the exposure and in what cases it really does not impact the exposure at all and uh, can we re can we re relate something between correlation and netting and is there any kind of a relation between the absolute value of the exposure and netting so three major topics one in general netting two correlation between the various exposures does it play any role in the netting three the absolute value of the different exposures does it play any role in kind of in the case of netting okay first thing the conceptual side of netting first of all it allows the future values of the trade to offset each other a better diagram here let's say i have a contract one with this is the with these are the values at different points in time right i am expecting these to be the values at different points in time probably let me call these as uh, the exposures at different points in time or probably let me not call them as exposure because there is a negative value as well so the value of the contract at different points in time so the exposure is only the positive part of it so this is the one similarly i have a second contract wherein uh, this is the positive part of the value which means this would be the exposure now if the netting had not been there when these two contracts are being executed i see that the exposure is the simple summation of the positive parts only this is the total exposure there agreed fair enough now the next thing which i am trying to look at is in case netting is allowed in case netting is not allowed the exposures are getting added this exposure i am adding up with this exposure so exposures are getting added which means uh, the position though they are exactly opposite positions they are not offsetting each other whereas when netting is allowed first of all there is a netting set that is defined so the let's say here the contract 1 and contract 2 i call them as a part of the netting set within that netting set the values are added not the exposures values are added means the positive and the negative becoming zero negative and a positive becoming zero so the values are added here and after that the net exposure is being taken now that's the reason here the expo after adding up the values these two are offsetting each other which means the net exposure is becoming zero so that is what is the impact of netting on the future exposure if netting has not been there this would have been the exposure because of the netting the exposure has actually come down and is there any impact of correlation with respect to netting now if i look at the correlation between the future values and the exposures right so let's say the correlation between the two future values is high it's very high chance that both of them will be of the same size which means they are not going to offset each other so that there is no netting benefit that is going to come up let's look at this example here let me look at okay uh, probably i'll uh, create a scenario here 25 15 15 5 5 5 minus 5 minus 15 
minus 15 minus 25 let me talk about this being the uh, let's say these are the trade 1 and trade 2 right these are the future values of these two now let me see what is the correlation that is existing between them just for the sake of understanding right let me uh, take 25 15 then I will look at 15, 5, 5, 5 or probably I will call it as, uh, let me uh, take it as 5 minus 5 otherwise. Okay, one of them let me take it 5 minus 5, minus 5 minus 15 and then I have minus 15 minus 25. Right, let us say these are the ones. Now, if I take the correlation between the exposures, these two exposures, the correlation between these two is very much close to 1. Right? The correlation between these two exposures is 1, which means they are very much running in the same direction. They are moving in the same direction. Now, let us look at the exposure now. Right? The positives. So, the in netting, without netting, without netting between them, what is the exposure? Because these two are positive, right? Because these two are positive, the netting is 40 here. Without netting, the total exposure is 40 and here it is 20. Here it is, okay, because I have taken this as minus 5, here it is only uh, it is 5 and here it is 0 because both of them are negative the exposure is 0 and uh, here also because both of them are negative the exposure is 0 right so without netting these are the exposures so 65 and divided by 5 I am getting 13 as the expected exposure now, let us assume now the netting benefit is there. Now, if the netting is there, right, positives and negatives will offset, but here there is nothing, 40, 15 and 5, still 20. Only this part is offset, so this will become 0. And even this part is out, I mean 0 only, here it is 0, so the expected exposure is 12. So overall the netting benefit here I am not getting any, not getting any, only 5 is coming here, 0, 0 which means the netting benefit is only 1. Because the correlation between these two is very high, high positive, I see that the netting benefit is very, very minute, right? The netting benefit is very, very minute. That is one thing. On the other side, look at this situation. Right, uh, if I am uh, looking at uh, the same situation wherein I have a trade 3 now, let us say the trade 3 is like this, minus 15, minus 5, 5, 15, 25. Right, minus 15, minus 5, 5, 15, 25. Now what happens uh, to the correlation between these two? The correlation between this and this, I see that it is close to minus 1, a very negative. Now, if it is very close to minus 1, what is the netting benefit here? Without netting, these are the exposures because in this case, 25. In this case, 15 because negatives will not be counted, only positives will be added. So, here it is 10. Here it is 15, here it is 25. So this is the overall exposure and the average uh, expected exposure is 80. Now if uh, netting is there, I will first add these values. 25 minus 15, 10. Because it is positive, I will take 10. 15 minus 5, 10. 5 plus 5, 10. Minus 5 plus 15, 10. Minus 15 plus 25, 10. So the average expected exposure is also 10. Which means there is a benefit of 8. So, the benefit is much higher if the correlation is much, much lesser between the future values. That's one important uh, point that is coming up. Between the future values, if the correlation is high and positive, the future values are expected to be of the same sign, 
So the netting is literally not much beneficial. Only when you are looking at them with opposite signs. You see here, in many a cases we see that the exposures are with opposite sign. That is where the netting is really providing a very good benefit. And the highly correlated, we saw in plus one, the netting benefit was only one. Whereas in case of minus one, the netting benefit was plus eight. So when they are highly correlated, the netting benefit is the least and it happens the reverse. Right? So if they are identical distributions, if the correlation is very, very close to one, we see that the netting benefit does not come in at all. Only the size of the transaction increases. The netting benefit does not come out at all. Probably in this case, the best way for me to understand that is increase both the transactions by five. Right? Increase all of them by five. Okay? So, this values I will increase by five. So, these are the numbers. Similarly, increase this by 5 as well. What is happening to the correlation now? Between them, the correlation is still 1. Now, look at uh, what is uh, without netting. What are the stuff? So, I can uh, look at only the positives to be added. So, maximum of this comma 0 plus maximum of this comma 0. This is what I would be adding without a netting. Okay, without. This is without netting. Now with netting, I will simply uh, compute maximum of this plus this 30 plus 20 comma 0. This is what is coming with respect to netting. Now you see where is the netting benefit? Netting benefit, even that uh, 0 is, uh, even that minimum of 1 does not exist. Right? So, netting benefit, if I look at, in this case, it is literally 0. In all the cases, it is 0. So, the expected netting benefit, which is the average expected exposure in terms of netting benefit is simply 0. But if they are negatively correlated, I see that the netting benefit will become more and more stronger. And wherever there is a perfect negative correlation, I can maximize the netting benefit. That's one positive point that we have to understand. And majority of the netting occurs across the different instruments, across the different asset classes, where I really perceive that the correlation between them is going to be much, much lesser. And this is where we even uh, try computing what is called as a netting factor. There is, a, there is a, a computation which we do with respect to the netting factor to talk about whether there is a netting benefit or no netting benefit or by what extent the netting, uh, netting is bringing down the exposure. Right? If, the, if there is a netting benefit versus net, no netting benefit, just to see by how much extent the exposure after netting, so probably this is nothing but exposure after netting versus exposure before netting. So it gives me, is netting really bringing down the exposure or not? That is what we are calling as a netting factor. So it is purely based on the average correlation between the various assets. And N is the number of assets. Now, let's assume that the correlation is 1. Perfectly positively correlated. Now, what is the netting factor that is coming out? Let's say I am talking of 5 different assets. 5 plus 5 into 5 minus 1, 4. And uh, uh, average correlation, they are all perfectly positive correlated. So, which means 1. And this I am dividing it by 5. So, oh, numerator is becoming square root of 25 divided by 5, which is 1. So, the netting factor is 1, means net to cross. Before, after netting, by before netting is 1. Both of them are 1 and the same, means there is no netting benefit. Netting benefit is 0, 
if there is a 100% uh, correlation, if the correlation between the various asset classes is 1. But if I have to see that the netting factor is much lesser, so if I want to make the netting factor to be 0, what should be the case? This, in the same formula, if this has to be 0, so I should get it as n plus n into n minus 1 rho, average rho, should be equal to 0. So, n into n minus 1 rho, uh, rho bar should be equal to minus n. So, it is coming out that the rho bar should be equal to minus 1 by n minus 1 or probably 1 by 1 minus n. Right? If the correlation between if the correlation, average correlation between the various assets is around 1 by n minus 1, then there is a 100% benefit because the net, the net exposure is becoming 0. And in, in some cases, if the correlation, if there, are, so this is a negative value. If you see, n is always higher, so 1 minus n is a negative uh, value. So this will always be a negative. But if the average correlation is 0, means if all the assets are independent, what would be the number there? This part will become 0. n into n minus 1 into rho bar will become 0. So the numerator is square root of n, denominator is n, 1 by square root of n. So overall netting factor for the exposure is around 1 by square root of n. So these are some of the things with respect to the netting that we have to be comfortable with. Then, the other side that I am looking at is, apart from the netting, wherein the correlation of the future values we have looked at, but I also need to look at the relative offset of the future values from 0. Now, if I have to look at the same, probably let me look at these two examples. Minus 20, minus 25, minus 15, minus 15, this. So, there are trade 1 and trade 2. Right? Now look at the netting benefit. Right? Now let us uh, look at the netting. Without netting, 25, 15, 5, 0, 0. With netting, this is 5. This is still negative, so 0. This is still negative, 0. Still negative, 0, 0. So overall, the netting wise exposure is 1 which means the netting benefit, expected netting benefit that I am getting is around 8. Now, look at the correlation here. Okay, that is an interesting part. Minus 20 and then 25. Minus 25 and then 15. Minus 15 and then 5. Minus 15 and minus 5. Minus 25 and minus 15. Very important statement here. Look at the correlation between these two. What I could see is correlation is 0. Even though the correlation is 0, I am able to get a very high netting benefit. The reason being all of them of trade 1, they are negatives. So, this is one more point. So, I have to look at the correlation between the future values as well as the correlation between the exposures also. Here, if I look at the correlation between the exposures, it could be much, much different. And one simple point for me to understand is if all the individual trades are having a negative value, it will definitely create a netting benefit irrespective of whatever the correlation that is existing between the future values, it is very well expected to provide a netting benefit for me. Similarly, you look at the other side, if both of them are positive, if all the values are positive, okay, without netting, 60, 40, all right, this is 25 because this is negative and not counted, 15 and 5. So, the expected Netting, uh, without netting, the exposure is, expected exposure is 29. But with netting, okay, add it up, 60, 40. But here it becomes 20. Here it becomes 0. And here it is 0. So, overall, 
the exposure is expected exposure is only 24 means there is a netting benefit which means even if all the values are positive also there is a possibility of some kind of netting benefit which means not just the correlation between the two i also really need to see by how much they are offset from zero all the future values by how much they are offset from zero even that is where i am looking at the absolute values and even that is going to contribute to the reduction in the exposure so that is where we are uh, focusing more on understanding the impact of netting on the future exposure how correlation plays a role with respect to netting and how the absolute uh, values of the offsetting uh, of the future values from zero also plays a role in terms of the exposure all right